Hello, everybody. Welcome back to VA 11 Hall A. All right. So first thing, I just want to get something out of the way. This is actually the first recording session I'm doing with my brand new bed finally set up. It's very nice. Unfortunately, um, kind of my desk was a lot wider than I thought, and this bed is really big. So my already small room has to be very awkwardly arranged to the point where the only walking space in my room is like that of a closet. Yeah, it's... Doesn't sound pretty to imagine, but honestly, it's kind of cozy, and I actually really like how it how it turned out. Like, I think I like my desk this way. Ah, oh, you know what? Anyways, enough of that. You probably don't even care. Let's actually load our data and get back into this awesome game. I've been wanting to play this. I am really... Ugh, I just... I got off work a little while ago, got a shower and stuff, and I'm just tired. I have to be up really early tomorrow for another, for work again. So, let's just enjoy some Valhalla tonight. That's what I want to do. I got some Smeargle reco all recorded. So I can, I can afford to play crap that people won't watch. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. I love this game. It's one of my, it's, this is one of my favorite series right now. Wish I could put, do more. Anyways, you have no new no, no, I couldn't even get the first sentence out without stumbling. You have no new notifications or reminders. Jill wants to buy a fan even though it's winter. Buying one will prevent her from getting distracted. You can now use nano camo. Okay, so I said we were going to explore nano camo. But... About... Let's check that. Incredible. The augmented eye. You can trust them. About... Nano Camo is a company founded in 2068 and the pioneer of nano machine fabric capable of real time texture swap. Meant for military use, we bring our products to the general public at the most affordable prices. Mascot Camo Tan is our mascot. She's designed by veteran character designer from Sukaban Games, Kiri. Kiri Kirian51. Yeah, that's the developers of this game, in case you weren't aware. Birthday, 2401, likes Musashi, Battleship, Tactical Fashion, and Peach Cake. Gotta love, gotta love a cute girl with a gun and bomb grenade thing. Customize, anyway, so what this does is, it all it does is change the picture here. That's literally it, and it, it may not seem like it's a lot of money, but honestly, don't do it. Don't like, don't, don't do it. Like here, yeah, these ones are a little pricier. This one, I think I bought one of these right off the bat and I seriously regretted it. And I mind the back when I first played this cause you need a lot of money later on. And you pretty, if you buy one of these, you more or less screw yourself over. I think I barely got past a certain point just by the skin of my teeth. But. Honestly, I'm fine with my wall the way it is. If you all think I should change the wall, tell me what color in the comments. Who knows? Let your voice be heard. Or ignored, depending on how I'm feeling at that moment. Anyways, let's read the augmented eye. Oh, hang on a second. I should buy the fan before I forget. I do like the J.C. Elton's theme. What does that say? Freak up. I can't even read what that's supposed to be. Where's a fan? Love is a drug, got that. Mulan T. Am I blind? Cutesy game poster, assorted cartridges, Crackerama, movie poster, replica toy, Turing. Crazy. Vintage gaming, I'm gonna have to read them. Beer on discount. The owner's trying to quit, so we're selling them dirt cheap. Meet the staff. Kiramiki, shoulder massager. But I... Wait, Joker Cyclone. Despite the noisy name, it's just a fan. Fans are good. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. Joker Cyclone purchased. Jill bought what she wanted, and she's pleased with herself. She will surely focus at work. Where is the fan now? I bought it. I demand to see it. Oh, yeah, it's there. It doesn't do anything when I even click on it. Anyways, let's read the augmented eye and go to work. 
starting from the bottom. Pollution to reach historic levels next year by Kimberly. Even though most countries in the world have adapted their economies to solve the ongoing problem of climate change, Glitch City still relies on ancient technologies in order to keep costs low with profits high. As a result of this backwards policy, it seems as though we'll be experiencing a huge increase in air, air pollution next year. Our contamination levels will force the whole population to move away from a lot of areas within the city. The soil is dying at an alarming pace, says experts on a report. Having to buy special raincoats and umbrellas does suck, but experts say you better get used to it. How long until someone says pollution is good? There's a book. Or there's a book. Yeah, someone's probably going to write that book. It's funny because it's someone would do that in reality. The augmented eye is being attacked. Hi, everyone. We take your security very seriously here at the augmented eye. And we have the obligation to disclose that recent articles on Alice Rabbit were vandalized by those we think is Alice Rabbit. Don't you mean... Don't you mean those by who we think are Alice Rabbit? Well, Al wait, no, they think Alice Rabbit is a single entity, so... Themselves are a very good impersonator. We want to extend our apologies and inform that we'll be limiting our coverage of Alice Rabbit to more just factual news and not entertainment pieces. Thank God I don't pay these fuckers for a sub. Alar alarms rise as the Apollo Trust Bank suffers terrorist attack. Well, I said the T word, so demonetized. Hijack screens at downtown Casanova announced what seems to be a terrorist threat aimed at the Apollo Trust Bank. The information suggests that a currently unidentified bomber is already inside the building. The White Knights Counterterrorism Unit responded to, threat to the threat immediately. However, the bank was then locked down by an external network attack. We might be dealing with a dual threat here, CTU's Chloe Bauer told AAE. The bank has been sealed shut using its own disaster prevention system. However, none of the terminals at the bank were working at the time. The building is basically sealed at this point. The hostages are trapped. Hope Say is alright. Don't we all? Kirimiki's blog wasn't updated. A white knight just beat me. Okay, this is new. Apollo Bank is being attacked, and no one is reporting on it. Are you actually surprised? Considering the nature of their threats, it's clear that Quincy doesn't want to take the blame. What a fucking coward. Do we have any sources there? I'm posting from the site. It looks like someone's inside the bank with a huge bomb threatening to blow up the building. Any demands? They want Quincy to quit and the White Knights disbanded. Wow. So they're actually helping the protesters. Um, that's not the way to help the people. What if this is just a huge false flag to blame the opposition? I wouldn't be surprised. This fucking place, lol. Let's wait for more information. Streaming Chan thread. I remember Streaming Chan. Did anyone see last night's escapade? She was at the Valhalla bar. It was alright. Bartender was a cutie, but man is she full of herself. Don't care, I'm going next week to, and, and ask her for a date. We all know you won't. Pretty sure nobody here has the guts to ask someone out. Is she still sleeping? Yeah, the bartender has been telling everyone they need to be careful with their words, lol. I wonder if there's a legal activity going on there. Like, why would you need to be careful with what you say? Maybe they're avoiding casual racism. True, still it wouldn't be rare for them to do shady stuff. This fucking city. Haha. <laughs> At least she's sleeping now. Last time I saw her taking some rest was about a week ago. Crash is one hell of a drug. Man, it sounds shady when they put it that way. Hollow Bank, what is it? Maybe the God's Guide say to safety. A white knight just beat me up. I'm fucking crying right now. Let me tell you the story. Waiting for Op to deliver. I'm here. Anyway it goes. I was going home after buying groceries at the store. I was very tired because I just had to line up for hours just to buy milk. And when I'm finally out of there, a group of three white knights stopped me and asked for ID. And also wanted to see my bag to check if I wasn't a scalper. And once they saw everything was in order, they asked me for a military service ID and I just... What the fuck? Why would I have that on me? And there's no one force conscription anymore. It doesn't make sense, and because I didn't have it on me, they asked for money or else they'd plant drugs on me. I, of course, refused, but they'd lose their patience, and one of them hit me right in my temple with temple with a gun. I was bleeding like crazy on the floor, so they just took my groceries and left. Holy shit, man, I fucking hate this place. I hate it so much, I want to leave this fucking hellhole. I'm so tired of this shit every fucking day. The thread is closed. I've been lucky to never have that kind of problem with the White Knights, I guess. All right, enough of that. Let's go to work. 
usually about take that much time. Hang on, I just gotta reach for something. Where is it? And my lights are out. Oh, this room is so tiny now, even though it didn't change. Good evening. Huh? Didn't expect you today. I was waiting for you to say, call and say you wouldn't be coming or something. Things at the Apollo Bank are getting ugly, so that means more people will be looking for a drink. You can take a break, you know. You're quite the hard worker. And the streets are not exactly safe right now. They've never been when you get down to it. And besides, I can't afford to not come with the bar closing soon. I wonder if any bar has used impending closure as a mean means of getting their employees to work. Seems like the total opposite would happen. Not to mention, I get bored out of my brains in my apartment, so I'd rather come here anyway. What do you say? Nothing important. Oh, what did she say? Hang on a second. Okay, someone pointed out to me that you can use the, sc the mouse scroll wheel to go back and check stuff. Thank you, whoever told me that. Nothing important. Gil isn't back yet? Nope, I wouldn't worry too much about him, though. If you say so. That girl's still here? Yep, she was sleeping so peacefully I felt bad about waking her up. So, would you mind doing that for me? Actually, yes, I do mind. But you're the boss, and it's kind of my fault she's here in the first place. Sorry about that. Hey, young lady, sleep another hour and we'll have to start charging you a motel fee. Mumble. No! Where am I? All right, the shoddy downtown bar. Let's see, all my gear is in place. And neither my pants nor my panties, short or shirt or brawl, have been displaced. Oh, it's the flat bartender. Good morning. Good evening. Evening. Oh, well, it's the best night or day of sleep I've had in quite some time. Sorry for all the trouble I may have caused you today or last night. D don't worry. You're so nice, flat bartender. Thanks for taking care of me. Bye. Hello, guys and gals. Streaming Chan's back in action with her batteries reloaded. Haha, <laughs> the moon, it burns! I feel like I've just unleashed something terrible onto the world. Come on, it's not that bad. Say, what's this bottle? A client gave it to me yesterday. A gift of sorts, I'm guessing. Oh, cool. It's some sort of rum. Rum? Nice! Want me to serve you a bit of it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's give the boss some rum. Go to the bottle drinks tab and drag it to the shaker before mixing. Bottle drinks? Okay. Every drink is priced at 600. Go to the bottle drinks and drag it to the shaker. Okay. Here. Alright. I'm gonna enjoy this in my office, thanks. Anytime. Anyways, I think I need to open my drink myself. Oh yeah. Got a crappy can of pop right here. Just because. You know, now that I think about it, it is December. It's kind of a miracle that this can of pop doesn't have like a Star Wars character plastered all over the front of it. Oh well. Okay then. All right, gonna exit this out. And I know I always start with a neon glow, a neon glow lights. I thought it was a neon lights glow, but yeah, I love this one a lot. Whatever, let's just do that. Drive me wild, traveling news. Actually, what is, what is traveling news like again? Go back. Okay, that one, I like that one. Where do I go from here? Is that new? Everything will be okay. Hey, Rene, those who dwell in shadows, nighttime maneuvers. Let me hear this. Eh, I like this one, but I feel like I heard enough. Eh, that's a good one, too. Your love is a drug. Snowfall. 
Renewed Hope. I can't remember what the hell all of these sound like, but I don't want to wait for all of them to preview. Um... Uh, showtime. Let's go. Time to serve drink, serve mix. Time to serve mix and change lives. Wait, that's not how it goes. Ah, <sighs> no one here to retort. Man, it feels lonely without Gil here. I just hope the restlessness in the streets doesn't lead to any dangerous or weird types coming in here. Good evening. Well, it's a brain in a jar. We're off to a good start. Holy shit, that was a record-breaking jinx. Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? I'll have a blue fairy. Don't make a joke about becoming real. Don't make a joke about becoming real. On it. Let's give this, um, brain a blue fairy. Cool. Blue fairy for Adele Hyde. One Flenergide. Optional Karma Train. Which means, fill it to the max! We here at the Picasper Show do not recommend loading all of your drinks with as much alcohol as possible, but for the for entertainment purposes, I will do it. I honestly have no idea if this has an effect on the dialogue at all, but I'm gonna do it because I can. All age, yeah, I check that. Success! All right, drink. Oh, I need that. Here you go. Nice, yeah, this is the thing. So, um, how are you gonna... Oh, you can grab stuff. I should have figured as much. You can drink stuff and eat. I have the same system li system Lilum do. Well, yeah, that would make perfect sense, actually. Can I ask you something, um, er, miss... Taylor. Call me Taylor. Just Taylor, okay. And yes, a cutie like you can ask me anything. Okay, Taylor. You have to be the first person I've met that didn't go, okay, just Taylor. Not too easy. You are a brain in a jar, correct? I'm sure, not a hologram of that, I'm sure. Yep, I'm a bona fide human brain in a jar. So, how? Why? What, does my handsomeness make you speechless? You're not something a girl sees every day, and that's saying quite a bit in these parts. Fear not, for I have a speech prepared for these situations. A speech? You're seeing one of the five great living bottled brains of the world. We are brains living in conditions that allow us to exist as any other humanoid creature. All while computers in our jars scan our activities. In a slow but steady manner, we are helping the world understand the inner workings of nature's most complex computer. I'm guessing you prepared that after being asked the same question too many times, huh? Not out of, ex not out of exasperation or anything like that, mind you. I just wanted to have something thoughtful prepared. Look, I even have a couple of pamphlets with me. You want one? Sure. <laughs> oh. That'd be fun to carry pamphlets around for, for such an occasion. What brings one of the world's five brains... One of our world's five brains in jars to this place, though? Oh, I'm from around here, actually. I just wanted to take a walk for the first time in quite a bit of time. Have you come here before? What does, like, your lower half look like? Are... Do you have, like, legs, or... Do you, are you just, like, uh, like, wheels? I don't know. Sadly, no. I'd remember a cute face like yours. Speaking of which, can I have your name? Um, it's Jill. Jill? That's a really cute name. Thank you. Say, weren't you scared of going outside today? What with the commotion around... Commotion and all? It didn't stop you from coming here either, did it? Yeah, you're right. It's gonna take more than cryptic but ominous news to stop me. You're awfully energetic. Did you know that? Sorry, does that bother you? No, not at all. 
Just that I figured a brain in a jar wouldn't be so... happy. While I was alive, my body got to a point where there wasn't much I could do. This new state of existence allows for me to accomplish more than I ever could before. Plus, I'm doing something that'll help people in the long run. When you... Okay, Lethalix is playing Geometry Dash. Oh, I just noticed that doesn't show up in the recording. I don't know why I even bothered saying that. Well, while I'm interrupting myself here, I need to, I need to set my throats. Ugh, pardon me. Ugh, it's getting hard to keep talking like that. Wouldn't you be happy? I wonder. Do you want to make me happy, Jill? Depends on what it takes. Don't worry, just give me a beer. All right, then yeah, I'll make you happy. One beer to make Taylor happy. All right. Oh, fuck, now my nose is all itchy. Yeah. Oh, this is another good track right here. All mixed. Drink time we go. Here, a beer. Ugh, sorry. Ugh, fucking so itchy. Beer's always good. It's interesting, though. Just yesterday, I was talking to a client about brain uploads. You were? Yeah, we were talking about how even if you upload your brain, you'd still be here. I thought about that, too. Do you think the you in the cybernetic environment would feel like she was indeed transferred? Like, would she remember everything, like waking up someplace else and so on? That's an interesting question. I was actually thinking earlier about being able to transfer someone's brain into a lilum. One of the brains is being used in such an experiment. Actually, they can make a functional lilum. Unfortunately, the wiring and other stuff, such stuff, makes it look, look more creepy than anything. They aren't transferring his identity or anything, though, just wiring him to a body. Oh. You'd think someone would rather do that than float around in an exposed jar. I have to admit, the whole brain thing does look creepy. But the body I'm telling you about is just uncanny looking. Speaking of uncanny, how did you feel when you first saw yourself like this for the first time? It was quite a shock, actually. It didn't last too long, though. I was never too attached to my body. Later in my life, that was almost literal. You know what the downside to this body is? I can't get drunk. If you want to call that a downside, if you wanted to drink alcohol for the taste, there are many alternatives. Drunkenness is a part of the whole experience. Why, though? Lilum can get drunk with no problem. Yeah, but in their case, their brain's a computer attached to their body. Getting drunk causes their brains to reduce the input speed to their bodies. Depending on the model, their dr drunk subroutine might throw in a different behavioral cycle, even. It's hard to get drunk when the whole point of you being in a jar is figuring out exactly how you work. Yeah, you're right. Hey, Jill. Oh, Alma. Oh. Just oh, Alma? Where's the courtesy one would expect from a from plebeian bar staff? Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? Happy? Not when you put it that way. Why, hello there, beautiful. Whoa! You hurt my feelings with that, darling. S sorry, you don't see talky, talking disembodied brains every day. I mean, I did work a summer in Lilum maintenance, but even then, those were talking heads. Oh, don't worry about it. At least you're not running or fainting. Your name was Alma, right? I'm Taylor. Nice to meet you, Taylor. Say, Alma, can I buy you a drink? Sorry, I only date people who are at least 50% organic. And have at least one face. Hmm, I know just what to strive for then. Just kidding. It'd make me happy to make you happy by buying you a drink. Does that bother you? 
I guess if Jill's the bartender, I don't have a problem with that. Awesome. I'll pay for your next drink, then. What will you have? I'll have a cobalt velvet. And you, Taylor? I'm fine, actually. You're gonna have me drink alone? I don't want to drink that much. Okay, then. Let's make a cobalt velvet straight from Taylor to Alma. Of course, she orders something super expensive. Rocks and mixed. All right. Oh, pardon me again. Ah. Whew. Your drink. Hope you enjoy it. You know, you've been nicer to me these past minutes than at least three guys have been in the last year. Judging from the way you two talk, I'm guessing you're, you've been a client here for a while now, right? Only for about half a year or so, if memory serves right. Really, one would think it's been longer. It feels like it's... It sure feels like it's been longer. Shut up. You love me and you know it. So, you just started coming here and that was it? Well, the first time I came here, the other guy... Speaking of which, where's Pablo? Gillian. Archim... Ar Archimedes? Ar Archimedes? What, what, what kind of name is that? I don't even know how to pronounce it. Don't know. Adventuring or something. Anyways, the other guy served me the first time I came here. Nothing unusual there. The next time I showed up, Jill here was the one serving, and... I don't know. I feel like she just gets me. There's this... Chemistry. We... we... click. We click, she says. The fact that I feel more chemistry with her than many of other people is kind of sad, though. It's always good to see a nice friendship. Sadly, it's getting late and I've gotta go. I'll leave you two lovely ladies alone. See ya. That is one smooth brain. Bye. Please come again. That tailor sure was nice. A bit weird at first, though. Apparently one of five brains being studied by scientists or something. There's a summary of it in this pamphlet. Let's see. Oh yeah, I've heard of them before. Can't believe I actually met one. Say, Alma, how many people are there in your family? Just curious. Well, aside from my mom and dad, we're five si- Sorry, four sisters and one brother. Funnily enough, we all have names that start with the first five letters of the alphabet. So you're the eldest one? No, I'm actually the middle kid. You're the middle kid, but your name starts with an A. Don't think too much about it. I never said the order reflected our ages. My sister Car Carlotta is the oldest one. Then there's Diana, just before me. Then comes Eva at the bottom. At the bottom lies Bell... Uh, ahem, sorry, the youngest one is Bernardo. Bernardo. You've never been alone, I'm guessing. Can't complain about that, I guess. It helps that we were never five, never f five in the same house. By the time Evita and Bernie were born, Diana and Carlotta had already moved. Speaking of family, today I came because I needed a break from everything that's been going on with them. Do you live with them? No, but Evita and Bernie do. Not to mention, I visit them almost every day. Anyway, my second eldest sister, Diana, just separated from her husband. It's not even been a week, but she's already got some other guy in her bed. She left her kid with her husband's parents and pretty much forgot about them. Never mind the fact that they need to go to school and all that. Damn. Diana's life has always been messy, but these days she's just re she's really making it big. She wants time for herself, time to live her life. She didn't think about that when she married the guy at 20. She didn't think about that when marrying a guy she had only known for like three months. You should take your own advice. Hey, I'd never marry someone who could catch my attention so quickly, okay? 
Sure, there was that one time when it almost happened, but I blame the damn stadium kiss cam. Kiss cam? I was going out with a guy my little sister introduced me to. Seems he was her friend's older br friend's brother or something. We went out a couple of times, and he invited me to a basketball game. The mood was nice, but then later the kiss cam focused on us, and instead of kissing, he proposed. I almost got caught in the mood and accepted. Huh? So I take it you rejected him in a stadium on the fucking kiss cam. <laughs> we went out for like three weeks. I don't know, maybe he wanted to get in my pants with the old sex on the wedding night line. But I honest to God can't understand why he thought it would be a good idea. That sounds too convoluted, you know? Proposing and waiting for the wedding night just for sex? Never underestimate the lengths a man is willing to go to get you in their bed. I've seen more convoluted plots over the years. I'm feeling tempted to ask, but I'll pass. Want anything else? Hmm? What's that bottle? Oh yeah, it's just some rum a client gave me yesterday. A gift? What did you do? A good enough service, I'm guessing. Kasiku. Hmm, interesting name. What does it mean? Kasiku, I don't I'm probably butchering that. Whatever. The name of the chieftain in some native tribes. I see, do you want me to serve you some of this? I'll pass. Don't have too many good memories where rum's involved. Get me a fringe weaver instead, will ya? Alright. Wonder what's up with her and rum, but anyways, let's just give her a fringe weaver. Would something happen if I gave her rum instead, but I don't want to lose my perfect service bonus. Fringe weaver. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. All aged and mixed. Fringe Weaver, drink time. One Fringe Weaver. What kind of memories do you have with rum? Nothing you need to worry about. Okay. All right, now it's my turn to ask questions. About what? What kind of family is your family? Well... I'm an only child. My mom and dad split amicably. My mom is a violinist, so she was always away from home with her orchestra. I spent most of my time with my dad, my aunt, and my grandpa. Aside from that, I'd say my childhood was quite uneventful. Huh, didn't you get something like your mom's artistic vein or something? I played the violin until I was around 16, I think. What made you stop? I don't know. I just kind of said, that's it, one day and stopped. What about cousins or the rest of your family? I see very little of them, little of them actually. Mainly because my dad moved away from most of them. Most of my mom's family live in France to boot. So your mom's French? Yep. Can you speak French? Mon hieroglyphia est plein d'anglais. I have butchered that. I apologize to all the French speakers out there that are watching. I, I don't even know why I attempted to read that. Y'all can probably translate that for me. Sorry, but um, contrary to popular belief, just because I live in Canada doesn't mean I automatically understand French. I've never had a need to really understand French most of my life. Ooh, what does that mean? Rubbish. I don't know. I can't speak French. Oh, okay. Cool, Jill. Cool, Jill. Just ruin it. Make me look even worse. I did try, though, but college started and I stopped taking classes. Funny thing. I actually have a cousin from my mom's side that lives close by. But you'll be hard-pressed to make me spot him in a crowd. You're kind of lucky, you know? All my mom's side of the family lives here. The chances of me meeting someone I'm related to on the streets are ridiculously high. But yeah, that's the primer on my family. Nothing too interesting, sadly. Your mom's a French violinist and you call that uninteresting? I'm wondering if your family has ever made a fuss about you being a hacker. Hacker makes it sound too exotic. 
It's like if I called you a mixologist. Please don't. Ever. Sounds like something somebody would say to make bartenders sound sophisticated. See? I mean, hacker is a good way to summarize it, but it's not the best. I'm a security consultant. People want to find flaws in the security of their systems, and I do my best to pinpoint where it breaks. Be it Glitch City, or anywhere, anywhere else in the world, they need security, I'm their woman. You've told quite a few stories about cracking into databases to retrieve info like some sort of mercenary, though. That doesn't change the fact that hacker is not the best term to use. Makes the whole thing sound illegal when it's actually an honest job. Didn't you tell me you once secured some incriminating pics from a guy's cell phone? A mostly honest job, jeez! What made you become a hacker, by the way? I've always been a sucker for puzzles. Even as a kid, I always had a Sudoku or crossword with me. But at some point, they started feeling kinda samey. So, when I started college, I took a course on security. System security. It felt like the kind of puzzle I was looking for. I mean, there are all kinds of things involved in breaching net security. You need to attack the stuff from different angles. And it's something that's always evolving. The whole point of everything is to strengthen security. Every time you think you've got the gist of it, they change everything. So it's kind of like an always evolving puzzle. A puzzle I help make harder at that. Huh, I didn't think about it that way. It is less action-y than what movies make it up to be, though. No real-time frantic typing, nothing like that. Still seeing my code break through something, it's an amazing feeling. Will you have anything else? Hmm, I'll have a classy drink, any classy drink. Here goes nothing. She wants a classy drink? What's the most expensive? A bad touch. No. 250, 250, 280, 260. Well, guess who's getting a cobalt velvet? Excellent. Drink time for myself. Mm. Here you are. Yep, just what I needed. Thanks. Say, Jill, what's the worst that could happen if you don't drink? get your drinks right? Well, people have the right to not give me money. If they don't pay for it, I don't get my bonus. No bonus means less money and no tips, which doesn't help because I have bills to pay. Oh, I see. Do you have to make an effort to pay your bills? Nope. You have no idea how much I hate you right now. Well, my job pays pretty well, and I'm not the, I'm not the kind to spend too much on things other than food and bills. Maybe maintenance on my hands and new equipment, but aside from that... Oh, I know. If you have trouble with your bills, why not live with me? We could be roommates. Don't know. Moving my stuff through the stairs because the elevator's broken. Having to move my liquor collection. Never mind the fact that my cat's a shut-in that got very upset the one time I moved some furniture around. The idea of moving just gives me a headache. You shouldn't take things so seriously when I say them, you know? I don't, but I've thought about it before. Now I need some air. I'm gonna take my break. You wanna come? Are you inviting me to the back of the bar? You should invite me to dinner first. Every minute you waste making jokes is time taken from my break. Fine, let's go. Boss, I'm taking my break. Call me if anything comes in. Sure, sure. All right, day five, break. It's now safe to keep playing, because it was dangerous before. 
うんうん、oh, sorry, I was supposed to click to make that go faster. Cold, 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 cold. I can relate. It's very cold outside right now, and I'm glad to be home. All right, I wish there was just a, a straight up random button. Can't hit with nothing. I don't know, I'm just gonna hit random stuff again. It sure is chilly out there. It's kind of refreshing. The hobo out there seems seems like a nice guy. And Billy Vine? Yeah, he's a cool guy. Very respectful. Apparently he got into some legal trouble and that's why he's like that. Really? He could also just be a very nice crackhead, though. I have a cousin that lives like a hobo, actually. Really. It's a bit complicated, though. Problem is, his family has tried to get him to live with them, but his pride won't let them accept their help. He'd rather live on the streets for some reason. You can't tell with some people, sadly. Why did he become a hobo in the first place? Bad investments and debts. Bank evicted him from his house. Oh. It's a serious problem because he has... Epilept epileptic attacks, but refuses to take his medication. I just don't get what's up with him. Honey, some service here. I'm here, don't scream. Oh, were you two hanging out at the back of the bar? What kind of stuff were you doing? Just talking. Is that what they call it these days? What do you want? Something soft, something sweet, no alcohol, please. Wouldn't it be the same if you just grabbed a soda from the vending machine? But I like you! Do you dislike my presence so much? Sweet and non-alcoholic, you say. Alright, Dorothy wants something sweet and alcohol-free. Alright, so just sweet drinks and look for something without Karmatrine. Uh, that's optional Karmatrine, but... Sparkle Star... Optional Carmatrine. Blue Fairy. I already clicked that, sorry. Moonblast. Carmatrine. Briantini. One Carmatrine. Okay. So it's gonna have to be one of the op free optional ones. What was what was what cost the most? I wanna get as much money out of this out of her as possible. Alright, blue fairy with no alcohol. Three, four, one, all aged and mixed. Success! Here, like you asked. Hmm. Okay, I just finished off my can. I'm just gonna move. I got my water bottle on the side here as backup, so I always got something to sip on. Don't worry. Here like you asked. See, you don't get this kind of treatment from vending machines. Unless you're Lawrence. But he has this weird idea that good service is the same as selling lukewarm cans of cola. Lawrence? A friend of mine, he's a vending machine. Oh. Oh, but how impolite of me. Mm hmm. I'm lovely and my name's Dorothy. Dorothy Hayes, nice to meet you. Oh, I'm Alma. The pleasure's mine. Dorothy, you say? Yep. Why? Nothing. I guess I've heard about you before. Really? What kind of stuff? Tell me, tell me! Mostly about your, um, pluckiness. And here I was thinking it was because I'm a sex worker. So much for trying to be subtle. Hey! I take pride in my job, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. More like doing them. Haha. <laughs> Isn't it dangerous? I know how to take care of myself, thank you very much. 
Where do you work, Alma? I'm a hacker. Really? A full-fledged hacker? Not the kind that sees a computer logged into some account and says that's hacking, right? No, of course not. I've always been curious about how being a hacker works. Do you just start typing really fast while waiting for something to happen? No. I can explain, but I don't know if it, I don't know if you'll get it. We won't know until you try, right? Last time I said that I had to Last time I said that I had to jam the plastic replica of a halogen halogen light bulb up a grown man's ass. Okay. It was a it was a success. Okay then, let me try to explain in general how it works. Let's say I have to retrieve information from a company's database. All right. First, I do some research on the target. OS, servers, how the information is stored and all that. There have been a couple of occasions where I had to go in blind, but they're the exception rather than the rule. First, I secure things from my side. I start working behind proxies, websites, and through other more vulnerable computers I find on the way. Uh-huh. After that, I start testing the, testing the networks. I go through the basic protocols, try known exploits as long as they don't trigger any alarm. Once I've tested the ground, the fun starts. I go through all the security protocols and look to bypass them. Sometimes I have to look deeper into the code for the password itself. I see. And then when I'm finally in, I go and retrieve user privileges. After that, I go and try to become a super user and get what I need. How do you do that? Well, there are a couple of ways. I can use a pre-made program to hack into an already existing account. I can use info someone already gave me. But the usual way is using a buffer overflow. Buffer overflow. B -b -b what happens next? What happens next? I create a back door in the system before leaving and covering my tracks. I, I, I can't. I can't handle it anymore. Okay, this is uh, turning her on, it seems. Alma, hack me. Hack me like you've never hacked anything before. Eh? Make my buffer overflow. Create a back door in me. Escalate your user privileges. Find flaws in my security. Sorry, I got carried away. No shit! What happened? Have you seen those movies or books where a couple does something like paint a picture or cook? But they make it sound like they're having sex instead? Suggestive scenes, yeah? Well, that whole thing was kind of like that for me. Really. I guess humans don't really get it because their minds don't upload to networks or anything. But trust me, if you recorded yourself giving a really detailed explanation in a really sexy voice, you'd make millions. Horny Lilum are an unexploited market. I see. Oh, looks like my ride is here. Your ride? Yep, my brother-in-law came to look for me. Is that all right to ask from him? It's okay, I've known him since preschool. It's just so happened that he got married to my sister. Hey Dorothy, you need a ride? Can you drop me by 3rd Street? Sure, it's on the way. Yay! I'll take your offer then. Bye, honey. Later, Jill. Take care. The street seems noisy. Oh, a client. Hello? Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get? Such a small yet comfortable place. Truly an oasis of spiritual drinks in the midst of a suburban desert. A place where lost and corrupt souls can gather to forget their troubles for a while. A nest where everyone from the most pathetic scum to the vilest trash junkie can just sit to kill their insides. Truly a real persona non grata. That's Latin for mysterious place. By the way, I'm so smart and philosophical. Okay. Alright, we got ourselves a persona non grata here. Okay. What will we have then? 
17. Excuse me? I said 17. 7 plus teen. What does that mean? What does it mean to you? Just to be sure, 17 is about the drink you want, right? Only if you want it to be. What the hell does 17 mean? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and guess it's the drink number? Piano Man. Okay, I got nothing. This has to be it. I... If this isn't it, then... I don't know. Two, three... To Adelha, yeah, I did that one. Two, no, damn it. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. On the rocks and mixed. Piano Man, how is this a 17? Oh, go fuck yourself. Sorry. It isn't. You said 17 would only be related to your drink if I thought it was, and I think it isn't. Ooh, you subverted my expectations by taking me literally. Sneaky. And what brings you here, Mr. Vir Virgilio? I'm Armandio. Virgilio Armandio. I'm not sure what he's a reference to. See, I introduced myself using the Asian order because that's a lot more polite. Right. And I came here looking for an otherworldly experience. I was passing by and saw this place is called Valhalla. I want to see the souls of resting warriors, the wounded spirits of noble souls. The golden, the golden hall full of never ending banquets, the lively Valkyries looking over them. We have some arcade machines in the corner. <laughs> no, 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 you're taking me too literally. You see, I'm being poetic, giving a mystical air to, to a mundane affair. I wanted to see drunk people. I wanted to see waitresses and food. I wanted to see the bar in all of its decadent glory. Well, you're out of luck. Today's been quite the slow day. Not that I'm very surprised, given how things have been going in the streets, though. Humans are a nasty bunch, that much is true. Making a ruckus, coming at each other. But that's to be expected from the only mammal to kill its own. I'm no zoologist, but I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Oh yeah, then give me an example. Not zoo zoologist bartender. Like I said, I don't know exact details, I just know that it isn't right. If memory serves right, once a lion takes over a pride, every cub born from another lion is killed or something. And if I'm also correct, what about praying mantises? Those things just bite the head bite the head off of whatever what uh, of their mates. Yeah. Pfft. Takes over a pride. You can't take over pride. Pride isn't a tangible thing. You need to stop making things up, not zoologist bartender. But going back on topic, do you know what, how, what the number 17 means? The atomic number of chlorine? No, and Chloe is a name, not a number, you know? The group where halogens are, are in the periodic table? Stop making up words like halogens, periodic, and table. Okay then, I give up. Seventeen is us. Hmm? Every human has seventeen pairs of chromosomes. That number is the whole foundation of you and me. It's twenty-three. What is? Humans have twenty-three pairs of pairs of chromosomes, not seventeen. Well, they're both primal numbers. So it's the same idea. Primal. Do you want any anything else? I'd like a single plum floating in perfume served in a man's hat. Okay. He wants a plum floating per perfume in a- son of a bitch. I have that. A fedora with perfume and a plum. Plum fume. Cool. Here. 
Ha, ah, you did, wait, wait, you did. Enjoy. I will. I'll drink this, um, perfume. You don't really have to. Yeah, that'd be silly. You win this round, bartender. Hey, bartender, have you ever thought about death? Ow. What if we're already dead, both of us? What? What tells that you and I even existed before I entered that door? How can you assure me that this reality is real and we are not, in fact, in heaven or hell all along? What if everything up to this point is just some stupid story written by an unemployed 20-something in his room? I could punch you to make you feel reality. I don't care about any of that, actually. This reality is real for me, and that's all that matters. Such a close-minded way of seeing things. You need to get away from the factual facts. Open your mind to things beyond your reach. You'll never reach enlightenment if you don't start. The habanera has started! The means of the twilight of the gods! In German, by the way. Well, you're on your own, bartender. Enjoy your new world order. Um, what? A couple of nearby cars exploded, it seems. Oh, hell. Let me, let me take a look out the window. Be careful. I see lots of flashes in the distance, most likely gunshots. Jill, come here a sec. What? Newscaster, about five GB, five gigabytes of reports proving that several White Knight squads have been used to cover Illegal actions were released to the public by an unknown anarchist group. We're receiving reports of several units going rogue and using their weapons to hunt down anyone they find on the street. Several counter-terrorism forces from neighboring cities have been dispatched in order to subdue the crazed units after a plea from the vice president. We're still waiting for a declaration, declaration from Zybot Zaibatsu's Corp CEO on the subject, but until then, things are ugly in and outside of that bank, it seems. I'd recommend you stay here tonight. It's too dangerous to even think about going outside. What if they break in? They won't. Even then, the bar has quite the security system. And I'll be here protecting you, as an added bonus. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I guess I'll stay tonight. I'll get you the spare mattress I have. Do you mind sleeping in my office? No, I guess it's fine. Good. Let's hope everything gets solved by the morning. I'll have... I'll have Za... Zonkanto on hand just in case. The metal bat with nails? There's nothing they can't bash. Heh. Say... Gil... Four. Hope everything's better by tomorrow. All right. One mistake, God damn it! Is there is there an actual way to do that 17 crap? Phase payments. I don't get a flawless service bonus. That's so bull crap. Sleep tight. I'll protect you. Don't give me money when I'm gonna sleep with you. That sends mixed messages. Okay, so yeah, I obviously I don't get to wake up in my apartments. So, we're just gonna save here and that's gonna be the episode. Boop, there we go. All right, anyways, thank you all for watching. This was a fun little hour of Valhalla to do. Tune in next time and we'll see what all the fuss was about. We'll find out, maybe, I don't know, what's gonna happen to the city. Will I get my flawless service bonus next time? Probably. I need another drink, because goddammit, I can't talk. <sighs> All right. Anyways, thanks again, and see y'all next time. Bye-bye. Have a good night.